Lies and denial, stealing from your parents and your younger siblings, running away from home and living in the streets, in and out of rehab, suffering a brain hemorrhage, almost losing an arm. These tragic experiences of the story of addiction told from two perspectives in two new books, Beautiful Boy, A Father's Journey Through His Son's Addiction by David Sheff, and Tweak, Growing Up on Methamphetamines by his son, Nick Sheff. And good morning to both of you. Good morning. It's, it's incredible to see this story, this, the, the one story from these two different but in separable points of view. And I know you say that you wrote this originally not to publish, but to survive. I what what do you mean by that? Well, I would wake up. Uh, with this, I was so blindsided by this when my son, uh, my just lovely, beautiful boy, my child, uh, disappeared uh, and was using drugs. And I knew that the phone could ring and it would be the phone that every parent dreads. So I would be up in the middle of the night, and I would be just incapable almost of getting through the... So I would sit down and write, and I just would write and write and write just to get through the night. And from your perspective, Nick, why did you decide to write about your addiction? Um, I, I think it was the same thing. I mean, I, I, um, I sort of have always written through my pain, you know, and written through um, my experiences. And even in my lowest of low, you know, when I was out on the street and I was shooting drugs, um, I was always writing, you know, it was sort of my way of... Of, um, of processing what I was going through. I, I think what's, what's, and you just kind of alluded to this, this was this young man who had the world by the tail. He was a good student, he was an athlete, and then all of a sudden something changed dramatically, and it was impossible for you to not look at this situation and think, what did you do wrong? Oh, I spent a lot of time fig blaming myself. Uh, I was sure that uh, you know, it, was all, it was all my fault. Um, you and caused was, the breakup of your marriage at, yeah. while Nick was a young boy. Everything. I think that's what we do as parents, is that we take responsibility for what's going on with our kids, and we want to protect them. That's our gut instinct. And, and when our kids are in trouble, we, sit, we spend a lot of time trying to save them. We spend a lot of time trying to figure out what happened. What did, where, where did things go wrong? You know, it, it, and the, and I spent a lot of time trying to figure that out, and I still don't. The answer is so complicated that, that there isn't really an answer. And, and Nick, you know, to, to, I'm going to pull this all together in one kind of question, but to, to kind of give the crib notes of what you went through, the buying and the selling drugs, the stealing to get the money for drugs, doing other things to get the money for drugs, nearly dying, having an infection from a bad needle that nearly cost you your arm. And while you were living through all this stuff, you thought you were living through it in a vacuum, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I, I Well, I sort of... I had this feeling like if I wanted to kill myself, you know, that was my business and, and um, I should be able to, to kill myself without, you know, affecting anyone around me. But um, it, it actually really wasn't until I, I read my dad's book, you know, and I cried um, so much and stuff that I finally sort of realized. Cried why? Because you, you, you realized what impact it had on his life? Yeah, on his life and on, you know, my little brother and sister and on my mom and on my stepmom and on everyone, you know, who cared about me. I mean, they were affected by me uh, being so self-destructive. I mean, it, it tore them apart and, and you know, you know, my dad had that brain hemorrhage and everything, and who knows if that was necessarily related, but I, it's certainly a good metaphor for, for what he was what going through. It's what you learn about addiction it, it, is that it's not that I don't think an addict stops caring about the people he loves, but I think there's only one thing they really care about, which is getting drugs, getting money for drugs, whatever it takes. Well, it's interesting. He says that, that it was a rude awakening reading your book on his addiction. What was your take on reading his book about addiction? Oh, it was it was a rude awakening for me too. I I imagined terrible things happening to my son when he was on the streets when I didn't know where he was at the time. At the time, but when I read his book, things got were, things were so much worse. Uh, it's what every shocked parent's you the nightmare. most? Well, I guess the thing that shocked me the most was the volume and the quantity of drugs that Nick was injecting into his body. I, I, I couldn't believe it. It, I, I, I could, it was hard for me to get through. I, I spent a lot of time in tears myself. Your, your book, Nick, is published by the, the youth division of this publishing house. So we're talking about 14, 15, 16-year-olds. It's very hard stuff in this book. It's a very honest appraisal. Yeah. How, how do you think it's going to sit with them? Well, you know, when I was growing up, I always felt so, like, isolated and alone and so full of self-hatred and insecurity and everything. And, and really, the thing that really helped me the most was reading uh, other authors' work of, where they were really be exposing themselves, like Yukio Mishima's Confessions of a Mask or Bukowski or Dennis Cooper or someone. Uh, th reading those authors really made me feel less um, alone, you know, and, and less crazy or something. So, you know, I really wanted to give back something like that, you know, to, to uh, a younger audience so they could realize that these dark 
thoughts and these dark feelings that they have, uh, they're not alone with that. And, and, and David, what do you want the, the reader to take away from this book? And do you think it's important that they read both books? Um, I mean, the publisher I, would let you know that it's good for, for sales, but do you think it's important that they're companions? Well, I think that I was instructed in ways that was so helpful to me to read Nick's book because I understood when, you're, when, you're, when your child is going through this, you think, how could they be doing this to me? How could they not... How can they be doing this to themselves? And I think when you read Nick's book, when you read this, his story, it's so brutally honest that you really get, you come to understand how far out your child goes. And it's not about you anymore. It's about, it's about, it's, it's what, it's the nature of addiction. Addiction is, it takes a person over. And the good news is after years of being estranged, you two are now close and, and getting along great. And you're clean now for yeah, how long? over two years now. Good, yeah, good for you. Two years, ever. three months, you know, four days, yeah, six hours. Who's counting? Who's counting right? <laughs> Dad is counting, believe me. Yeah, exactly. Nick and David, nice to meet you both. Thank you so much. Man. And the books are Beautiful Boy, A Father's Journey Through His Son's Addiction and Tweet, Growing Up on Methamphetamines. David and Nick Sheff.